so shall the last be first and the first last. For many are called, but few chosen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The imagery and symbolism found in the epistle and gospel of today's Mass points to a most important divine message. We have been invited to participate in eternal glory. It is now the time to work in order to obtain the reward. The kingdom of heaven is like to a householder who went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And having agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. Above all, we must understand that heaven is a reward. God has made it possible for us to merit such a reward. The reward has been freely offered. We are all invited to work for it, like the laborers in the vineyard. But the reward is given only to those who deserve it, only to those who actually do the work. It is often said that God loves us unconditionally. This is true in a sense, in the sense that God has loved all of us first and has invited us to participate in his own happiness. But in order to obtain such happiness, we must correspond to God's love. Friendship is between two persons. So in this sense, God's love is not unconditional. He expects us to love him back. In order to obtain the eternal reward, we must fulfill two necessary conditions. The first condition is to have the virtue of faith. Faith is the beginning, is the foundation and the root of justification. And the second condition is to have good works, good supernatural works. And this is possible only if we are in the state of sanctifying grace. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing in the marketplace, idle. And he said to them, go you also into my vineyard, and I will give you what shall be just. And they went their way. And again, he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour and did in like manner. An author points out that those standing idle in the parable are not sinners because sinners are not idle. They are dead. If you love mortal sin, for example, the sins of the flesh, impurity, you have been called for to a life of grace. But your present state indicates that perhaps you have not been chosen for a life of glory. Yes, you can still change and go back to grace, but as long as you love sin and refuse to take all the means necessary to remain habitually in the state of grace, there is no hope for you. Extraordinary graces are called extraordinary for a reason. Do not abuse God's mercy. One of the signs of not being predestined is the habit of impurity in an old age. But let us go back to the idol of the parable. He is idol who works not the work of God, that is, he who neglects religion and he who relegates religion to a second place. And this is the case of those Catholics who are 
externally pious and observant, but who remain attached to the things of this world. The soul of those Catholics is not totally converted to creatures, but is not totally converted to God either. This kind of Catholic is lukewarm, he is tepid, and this is a very dangerous state for the soul. We know that because in the book of the Apocalypse it is said, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will begin to vomit thee out of my mouth. God demands our entire heart, not just part of it. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart, and with thy whole soul, and with thy whole mind, and with thy whole strength. This is the first commandment. But about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why stand you here all the day idle? They say to him, Because no man hath hired us. He said to them, Go you also into my vineyard. Saint John Chrysostom says that they who have neglected till extreme old age to live unto God have stood idle to the eleventh hour. Yet even these the master of the household calls and oftentimes gives them their reward before others, inasmuch as they depart out of the body into the kingdom before those that seemed to be called in their childhood. In a way, it does not matter if you have been tepid or lukewarm for many, many years, even for your entire life, as long as you decide to accept the Lord's invitation at the 11th hour, as long as you make yours the words of the apostle, I therefore so run, not as at an uncertainty, I so fight, not as one beating the air, but I chastise my body and bring it into subjection, lest perhaps when I have preached to others, I myself should become a castaway. St. Paul says, I chastise my body, showing the necessity of self-denial, mortification, to subdue the flesh and its inordinate desires. Working in the Lord's vineyard is uh, the exact opposite of being idle. The spiritual life is a constant struggle and demands generosity. It would be unreasonable for someone to refuse the Lord's invitation by reason of the labor involved. Why? Because the present life is very short and the sufferings of this life are very, very short. But becoming a castaway is forever. Damnation is eternal. And to refuse the cross and the labor appears even more unreasonable when we remember the words of our Lord. My yoke is sweet and my burden light. And when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith to his steward, call the laborers and pay them their hire, beginning from the last even to the first. And you can see that God is always faithful to his promises. In the book of Deuteronomy, we read, And thou shalt know that the Lord thy God, he is a strong and faithful God, keeping his covenant and mercy to them that love him, and to them that keep his commandments, and to a thousand generations. And today's gospel ends with the very known passage, so shall the last be first, and the first last, for many are called, but few chosen. 
Saint Gregory says that there are very many who come to the faith, yet but few arrive at the, he at the heavenly kingdom. Many follow God in words, but reject him in their lives. Saint Paul again illustrates this point. For I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea. And all in Moses were baptized in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. But with most of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the desert. Only two people entered the promised land. Unlike Joshua and Caleb, the other Israelites followed the Lord's calling out from Egypt, but they did not follow him into the land. Many Catholics repeat this same error. They have followed the Lord as he led them out of the spiritual death of sin and guilt. They are out of Egypt. They are forgiven of their sins. They have new life in Christ. However, they do not follow the Lord on into the land. Instead of working hard for the attainment of true holiness, they prefer to remain standing idle. So we have two quick lessons to gather from this. First, we must learn to avoid all presumption. The fact that we have the faith does not mean that we are going to persevere in it until the end. And second, we must never despair of our neighbor. Many who are sinners today may still receive the grace of conversion. And this is what, according to Saint John Chrysostom, our Lord means when he says, the first shall be last and the last first. Christ alludes secretly to such as were at the first eminent and afterwards ended up with no virtue. And to others who have been reclaimed from wickedness and have surpassed many. So that this parable was made to quicken the zeal of those who are converted in extreme old age, that they should not suppose that they shall have less than others. Our Lady, help of Christians, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.